Howdy there, folks. Root Beer here, looking at the 2016 Canadian Open paper, and we are on B2. The squares of a 6x6 six six square grid are each labeled with a point value. As shown in the diagram below, the point value of the square in row I and column J is I times J. So, for example, second row, uh, third... Oh, they're, they're numbering from above. Okay. Or, sorry, they're numbering from below rather than numbering from above. All right, all right. So if I wanted to pick the second row here in the third column, I would get 2 times 3, which happens to be 6. If I were to pick fifth row, fifth column, that would be 25 here. Okay, so it's just a multiplication table written a little different than I was expecting. All right, a path in the grid is a sequence of squares such that consecutive squares share an edge, and no square occurs twice in the sequence. The score of a path is the sum of the point values of all squares in the path. De determine the highest possible score of a path that begins with the bottom left corner of the grid and ends with the top right corner. Okay, so for example, we could pick, uh, let's use the cyan, we could make a path of squares going like this, and so that would be a path of squares. Yeah, that's all it is. So consecutive squares share an edge. They really do. And no square occurs twice in the sequence. They have There's no overlap, nothing like that. So the score of that would be, if I clean this off, it would be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, which is 10, plus 8 plus 12, uh, that's 20. So 10 plus 20, 30. So we'd get a score, pa uh, yeah, score for the path would of 30. And we just want the highest score possible that starts with the bottom left corner and ends with the top right corner. Okay, uh, let's, let's get a larger version of this grid. And I think, I think it's time we just sort of play around with it. It might be possible to, I'll, I'll avoid adding the numbers in right now. I'll add them in. Because right now all we really need is to, to navigate the path. And my first instinct is, is it possible to uh, get from the bottom left to the top right and hit every square? We couldn't double up on squares. Those are the rules. But could we hit every square? And I think we could. No, no, we can't. Hmm. Unless I haven't tried hard enough, but I don't think we can. Um, let me just briefly explain why. If we were to checkerboard this thing. Oops. So, so color in like a checkerboard, so I'm using pink here. Then if we're going to connect squares in a path, If we're on a, a path, uh, well, we'll use red again. If we're on a pink, we have to go to one of the two white squares that are next to it. You can't go from a pink to a pink. So if we're going to hit every square, we have to start pink, white, pink, white, pink, white, pink, white, pink, white, pink, white. So pink, white, pink, white. And we just keep going on like that. But... We have to end on a pink. We start on a pink, end on a pink. That's what we've got going on here. But how many pinks are there? Well, half of the squares are pink. So 18 pinks, 18 whites. But it has to go pink, white, pink, white, pink, white. So if I start with a pink, end with a pink, and we've got whites in between, if I've got 18 pinks, I'm going to have exactly one less white because we can pair them up other than the last pink. So we'll only hit 17 whites. So armed with that knowledge that we can't actually get everything, we have to say, all right, at worst, or sorry, at best we're going to miss a white. Now what white should we pick to miss if we can indeed pick it? Well, the smallest possible white 
colored squares are the two next to the starting one. So how about we try and miss one of those? Right? We know we can't get everything, but maybe we can try and just avoid this square. So I'll black it out, and we'll see what we can do. So, well, let me see if I can do this with one stroke. There we go. And we know that's the best we can do because we've just sort of reasoned with this checkerboard. Although you don't have to reason with it. It's a, it's a part B question. They just want the final answer. Um, but we, we have managed to reason why we will, we will have to admit, omit at least one white. So we choose to get rid of this two. So now the question is, okay, uh, determine the highest possible path a score can be that starts with the bottom left uh, uh, corner of the grid and ends in the top right corner. So we're adding up every number except two. Okay, how are we going to do that? Well, it's actually not that bad. Uh, if we look at, I'll use blue, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to be easier to add up the whole grid and then get rid of that two than it is to just try to add it up as is. So if we look at that, the next row is just double this row. Okay, and the row above it is triple the first row. Okay, so if I called the sum of this row s, and incidentally that will be uh, 21, then this is going to be 2s, and 3s, and 4s, and 5s, and the last row will be 6s. And if we add those up, we get 21s. So the sum of the whole grid is going to be 21 times 21 which is 441, but we're missing one, two. So 439, I almost wrote 339 there. 439 is the best that we can do, and we know why. And we know we can't get a full path, but we can get almost everything. And we just picked the smallest one that we wanted to miss. So 439 is going to be our final answer. So join me for more of Part B on our open paper in the next video. Until then, take care.